separation for ladies. Please ensure your seat backs are in the upright position. Your headrests are lowered and your tray tables are stowed. Any carry-on items now should be secured underneath the seats or in the overhead compartment. Welcome to Heads vs. Feds, where the ultimate odd couple give their take on the drug war news stories of the day. I'm Stephen Hager, former editor-in-chief of High Times Magazine. And I'm Bob Stutman, former head of New York's DEA's office, the world's largest. I'll cut out that part about the world's largest. Nobody cares. Everybody cares. <laughs> what do you want to talk about today, Bob? Oh, you know, uh, unlike you, who usually brings stories to the table, I uh, actually found two great stories today. I think one very important story is the issue of hemp. Look, Steve, as you know, I am not an anti-industrial hempist. I do not buy the government's position that you treat all hemp the same because you can't tell the difference from a helicopter. To me, that's not a good reason. So I think industrial hemp under 0.3% which is what the Canadian law is, should be legalized. I have no problem with it. Uh, you, cannot go, you can't get high by smoking 10 acres of industrial hemp. So that's not my issue. However, I constantly hear you and folks like you talk about how hemp is the greatest product in the world. It's gone everything from the Gutenberg Bibles on and on and on and on. And my question to you has always been, and I still have not gotten a good answer, why do all Europeans basically, not 100%, but the vast majority of Europeans, why do they use cotton wool? Why do they not use hemp? Well, today there was a very, very interesting story that I found, and a second one that talks about the Haynes Company. Now, as you and I both know, Haynes, Haynes makes tidy whities most men's underwear. They're usually 100% cotton. The price of cotton has gone up so much that they are now looking for an alternative to cotton or at least mix in with cotton so they don't have to go 90-95% cotton. They've looked at all kinds of products, all kinds of products, and unlike what you say, the product they came up with, which was the most viable, has the best alternative, and is the best price, is not hemp, indeed it is flax. All right, Bob, let's, I happen to have read that Wall Street Journal article myself. So I will tell you, first of all, that um, they did come to the conclusion that flax was economically the best alternative to cotton. The reason they came to that conclusion is because they didn't even look at hemp, because hemp is not legal to grow. So hemp was not even mentioned once, not one time. Steve, they did look at hemp. No, but it's not, not, not in not that article. Story. It's legal in Europe. Uh, I, uh, has made I'm going to have to call Haynes and check this we because. Did. So check back with us next week or maybe tomorrow for the next episode of Heads vs. Feds. Yeah, who knows what crazy thing he's going to say next that I'll have to respond.